viewers welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish so carrying with the theme of centrifugal force and uh, Euler force and Coriolis force that I did in my last video I brought yet another video which is based on the concepts of centrifugal forces and Coriolis forces so uh, I'll, pre I'll be presenting a problem and then I'll be presenting the concepts required for that problem and then uh, we'll be solving the problem okay so uh, let's see uh, i'm going to present two very nice facts in today's video and i'll also be proving those facts so let's see so first of all let me present to you the problem so that you're motivated enough to learn the concepts required to solve the problem so here's the problem a wheel with radius capital r is uh, placed flat on a table a massless string with one end attached to the rim of the wheel is wrapped clockwise around the wheel a large number of times so here is a wheel and we have wrapped around uh, the string so many times when the string is wrapped completely around the wheel a point mass m is attached to the free end and glued to the wheel so somewhere over here uh, uh, we had attached a uh, uh, mass and then we had glued this mass to the rim okay so what happens next the wheel is then made to rotate with constant angular velocity omega angular speed omega at some point the glue on the mass breaks and the mass and the string gradually unwind with the speed of wheel kept constant omega by a motor uh, if necessary so this wheel is uh, uh, rotating either clockwise or anti-clockwise that we'll see and the glue has broken so that's why uh, under the action of centrifugal forces or whatever forces are acting on it this uh, string begins to unwind because the glue is not there anymore okay so the string gradually uh, unwind okay mass and the string gradually unwind and this uh, uh, the omega is uh, kept constant using some external agent maybe a motor or something okay so what do we have to calculate the first part is calculate the speed of point mass from rotating frame of the wheel as a function of unwrapped length of the string so we have to find the speed as a function of unwrapped length let's say l so what is the speed relative to the rotating frame as seen from the rotating frame uh, uh, in terms of the unwrapped length L of the string and the challenge was to do it without integration that was the main challenge right in the community post I uh, wrote that uh, we want to do this problem without using integration anywhere okay so that's the real challenge we have to first of all find the speed of this mass as a function of unwrapped length L of the string and the second part is calculate the unwrapped length as a function of time consider both clockwise and anti-clockwise rotations of the wheel so I have done it for one case and the other case is similar you can uh, directly do it exactly the same way uh, as far as my technique is concerned okay so now let me get get into the required concepts uh, for this problem I'll be explaining all the concepts in detail so stay tuned till end so that those concepts are there with you uh, for you to keep and they'll help you in your uh, uh, JE questions and uh, understanding of physics so what's the first concept so first concept required for this problem is the concept of centrifugal potential energy so in a frame rotating about fixed axis with constant angular velocity centrifugal force is a central force of the form capital F vector is equal to FR R cap right so centrifugal force you know that it acts radially outward okay so a force which is always directed away from a point or towards a point and uh, uh, is a function of uh, just the distance from the point is called a central force so in that sense centrifugal force is also a central force in the rotating frame and as you might have studied that all central forces are conservative any force of this form capital F is FR of R cap all such forces are conservative okay and whenever we have a conservative force we should be able to define a uh, potential energy for any conservative force so how is uh, a force related to uh, potential energy any conservative force is related to potential energy so you know that force is the negative derivative of potential energy right so so centrifugal force is m omega square r vector uh, as i had showed uh, in the last uh, video so the centrifugal force is m omega square r vector which is nothing but minus du by dr r cap right so uh, so you, from here you can directly infer that uh, centrifugal potential energy function is what minus half m omega square r square simply you take here and then r dr integration becomes r square by 2 so i'm going to use this result directly now i mean uh, so uh, for, i've used integration only for proving this this is a trivial thing okay 
so uh, remember this result so whenever we have a rotating frame we can write centrifugal potential energy as minus half m omega square r square provided omega is constant okay now what about uh, okay so now the second concept in this problem is the Coriolis force does no work in a frame rotating with constant angular velocity but a fixed axis Coriolis force will never perform a work why because the Coriolis force is always perpendicular to the velocity as seen from rotating frame we saw in the last video that Coriolis force is minus 2 m omega cross v as seen in rotating frame so and you know that cross products are always perpendicular to the vectors whose cross product we are taking right so we can say that Coriolis force is perpendicular to the velocity as seen from rotating frame and their dot product must be therefore zero. So we can say that power developed by Coriolis force is uh, zero, therefore power developed by Coriolis force is always zero. A similar thing happens with magnetic forces on charged particles also because force and velocity whenever they are perpendicular, the power developed will be zero and therefore the work done by Coriolis force is zero. So that's a beautiful fact. So we need not worry about uh, any kinetic energy changes occurring because of Coriolis force. All we need to see is whatever is the change in centrifugal potential energy that should uh, uh, account for the change in kinetic energy, right? So we can kind of come up with the law of conservation of mechanical energy in the rotating frames with constant angular velocity, right? So now let us apply these two concepts to the current problem, okay? So let us say L length is unwrapped, okay? Uh, the bead started from somewhere and L length is unwrapped. So centrifugal force will be radially outwards and that will be equal to what? See, if this length is L and this is R, so by Pythagoras the inclined length is under root of R square plus L square, right? So centrifugal force is M omega square R square plus L square, right? And Coriolis force, the direction you can see, the velocity as rotating frame, let's say this uh, string is unwrapping in that direction. So V from the rotating frame is in that direction. I'm going, in, so disk is appearing stationary, right? Therefore, I'm applying Coriolis force. So V from rotational frame is like this and omega vector is into the page. So omega cross V, if you see, that is outside, but minus 2 M omega cross V. So you know that Coriolis force is, F Coriolis is nothing but minus 2 M omega cross V root, okay? So with, because of minus sign that cross product will go inside. So this is our Coriolis force. It turns out that we don't have to worry too much about Coriolis force uh, here uh, because uh, anyway it's not doing any work. So just for sake of uh, right, drawing the correct FBD, I just showed you the Coriolis force and of course there will be tension and oh, I need not worry about anything here except for the centrifugal potential energy, right? So initially L is zero when the uh, whole thing was uh, wrapped so L was 0 and small r was equal to capital R, okay. And finally, uh, my dyslexia, Y was missing, okay. So finally, small r is under root of capital R square plus L square. So this is the, uh, this distance, okay. And initially, the rotational, uh, the velocity of this bead from the rotating frame when the glue had just broken, the initial velocity was 0. So initial V rotational was 0. So this is initially, right initially okay and let's say finally v rotational is v rot okay so now conservation of mechanical energy so minus half m omega square r square this is the potential energy formula that we just uh, derived okay minus half m omega square r square that's the centrifugal potential energy at the initial moment should be equal to minus half m omega square r square plus l square potential energy at the final moment when uh, l is unwrapped plus half m v rot square v rot is the Velocity as seen from the rotating frame, right? And simple rearrangement of this equation, so many things will cancel, R square will cancel off and just uh, you rearrange and you get V rot is equal to omega L. So that was the answer to part A, right? So velocity as seen from the rotating frame is simply omega L. So this is uh, velocity as a function of unwrapped length L, okay? Now this equation is very interesting. So why that is interesting, we'll see in a while. V rot is omega L, so why is this interesting, see? So there is one omega, which is the omega of the wheel, right? And from the rotating frame, this thread is unwrapping, so there will be certain rate of rotation of this thread from the rotating frame, right? From the rotating frame, the disc appears stationary, but this thread, the, the unwinding thread appears to be rotating in an uh, anti-clockwise direction, right? And so let's say the rate of rotation of this line is omega prime. Now, if you see, let me call this point as P threads. This point is P, which obviously has instantaneous velocity zero. So this point becomes the instantaneous axis of rotation for the length PQ, right? And let's say 
the angular velocity about this instantaneous axis is omega prime so the velocity of q uh, should be equal to omega prime into l right so that's also the velocity as seen from the rotating frame right so omega prime into l is v rot and we also saw that uh, v rot is also omega l right so omega prime into l is same as omega into l that means what omega prime is same as omega okay so that's the beauty here that uh, the uh, the angle angular velocity of the thread as seen from the rotating frame is same as the angular velocity of the uh, frame itself right the angular velocity of the wheel itself so that's that's uh, a brilliancy that's come here and uh, this will make our thing uh, make our uh, problem very simple and uh, there's no need to integration even for part b just using this fact right that omega prime is equal to omega okay so that's what I've written. Observe that P is the instantaneous axis of the thread portion PQ. Let the rate of rotation of the string will be uh, B omega prime. Then V rot is omega prime L. And from equation 3 and 4, omega prime is omega as I described earlier. Okay. That is rate of rotation of unwrapping portion from rotating frame is same as angular velocity of the frame. Now at time T, how much uh, the, the thread would have rotated? So initially it started from here and finally it is here. So that means that uh, the thread has rotated through how much angle? Thread has rotated through an angle omega t, right? So initially it was pointing here and finally it is pointing in this direction. So this angle must be equal to omega t, which is same as the distance through which, I mean the angle through which the radii have rotated. So tangent, ro rotation of tangent is same as the rotation of the radius. So this angle is also omega t. Uh, so omega prime t, uh, I should have written, but omega prime t is same as omega t. So so it rotates through an angle omega t. So how much uh, uh, string length has been unwrapped? So you know that whatever was wrapped on this arc that I have just highlighted with blue, this much has unwrapped, right? So this is uh, radius into angle r theta, right? So I readily now know how much string has unwrapped. So from, okay, so at time t the string has turned through an angle theta is equal to omega t, okay? Unwrapped length is then l is equal to r theta is equal to omega r t, okay? So that's our answer to part b, okay? So uh, these were the two parts to the problem and we are through with both of them. And uh, it is interesting to note that string unwraps at a constant rate. You can see dl by dt is omega r. So it is unwrapping at a constant rate. And another uh, extension to this problem could be, you can try it for yourself. We could also find the velocity of mass from the ground frame at general time. So we know the velocity of the mass from the rotating frame. So what we can do, there will be certain point just below this mass in the rotating frame. So let's say Q prime is that point uh, that belongs to the rotating frame. So from ground frame, the velocity of uh, uh, this Q will be velocity of Q prime plus velocity of uh, Q relative to Q prime, which is V rot. And we could su superpose the two velocities to get the velocity uh, uh, from the ground frame. Actually, the velocity of Q prime, which is just below the point Q, will be perpendicular to this radius, right? So this velocity vector, which will be equal to omega into uh, under root of R square plus L square, and plus this vector. If you add the two, you will get the velocity from the ground frame also. Okay. So that's my analysis to this problem. The beautiful problem, uh, a variant on uh, uh, David Moran's uh, problem, uh, 10.11. Okay. I hope uh, uh, this video helped you gain some knowledge and uh, some experience to help you better perform in your JE Advanced or uh, Olympiads. Okay. Thanks a lot for watching this video. And uh, if you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up and please share this video as much as possible with your friends through whatsapp telegram discord or uh, and make sure that you uh, share it with at least one friend and you make one friend subscribe if each one of you he helps me get one subscriber my channel will blow up in no time okay so i do expect that uh, for the hard work that i'm putting for you uh, you help me grow this channel uh, you do your bit for uh, helping gr uh, the growth of this channel and health of this channel. Okay, once again, uh, uh, and most importantly, if you are a first time visitor, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel right away because that's what keeps me motivated to do new videos for uh, students and teachers uh, almost every day. Okay, so thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you.